Hello everyone, hope everyone has had a great Christmas. This is me recording a quick video to show typical Acrobat settings for Epson L1800 type printer as requested by a whole bunch of you. So without wasting any more time, let's go straight into the settings. Paper size, this happens to be an A3 size in centimeters and if you want to print on let's say an A4 size film, you would go on Google, you look up A4 size paper uh, how big it is and you just type in the numbers here uh, all of these control the image output the image size we can ignore that scale um, equal proportions if it's true that means the image is locked and you can resize it without it getting skewed we can ignore this part this is for printing patterns we don't really need that Okay, so for an Epson L1800, you would go for this option, and then you would pick the printer where you installed it. Don't really need this. Okay, so this is your print resolution, the quality of your print, and this is as high as anyone would usually print. The only downside is that it takes around 15 minutes to print an A3 size design, and if you drop down quality a little bit, you'll be able to print an A3 size design in as little as nine and a half minutes. So it's much quicker. Uh, the quality is slightly lower, but if you're standing one meter away from the person wearing a t-shirt, you won't be able to tell the difference between this one and this one. Um, this one makes the image look a little bit sharper, but you can't really tell the difference. Uh, photograph, sheet. Now, Roll printing is a little bit buggy at the moment, you need a separate software um, and until something solid comes out that's reliable, I suggest you just stick to um, printing on sheets. Bidirectional and unidirectional printing. So let me demonstrate. Imagine this is your print head. Bidirectional, it will go print, 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 print each way. Unidirectional printing, it will go print, reset, print, reset. So it will print one line at a time. It's much slower, but it solves a whole bunch of problems if you have an old printer with a misaligned um, print head. Because if you print using bidirectional settings, uh, you'll print a lot quicker. But you might have problems uh, with misaligned colors and streaks and all sorts of things. So yeah, for most people, bidirectional is the way to go. If you have a really old bashed up printer um, with misaligned print head, you would go with unidirectional printing. Imagery sampling falls. Okay, so the droplet size. This uh, There's a lot of confusion about this option. So your prints will consist of tiny little drops. And this option controls how big those drops are. Uh, essentially how big are the droplets that your print head spits at the film. And as you can imagine, small is going to give you the best results because your image is going to be made out of lots and lots of tiny little dots that are invisible to a naked eye, well, from a certain distance anyway, and your image will look really smooth. The only problem is uh, Epson L1800 doesn't like printing with small droplet size. So the next best thing is mix. Mix requires a really clean print head. Uh, it will work for most people, but if you're printing uh, with this setting and you start seeing shadows and overspray and all sorts of problems, um, then you can go to medium and large. And large droplet size is your last resort. Uh, to me, it doesn't look that great close up. So. But it's, it's something to play around. Okay, so let's look at the color settings. Um, ink channel, this is basically telling uh, Acroreb where you installed your inks, your color and white inks. 
um, ink limit is basically telling your print head how much ink you want it to spit at the film. 40% um, is a good starting point. If you decrease this number, your end result might look a little bit faded. If you go up, it might look a little bit oversaturated. And you can control individual colors. So, for example, uh, some people complain that their designs look a little bit too yellow. So you can um, manually, <coughs> excuse me, dial down yellow, for example, or decrease or increase specific colors. When it comes to white, you can start with as low as 10%, um, especially if you're printing on white or light garments, you might not need as much white. Um, 60 is usually a good starting point because it gives you enough ink to for the powder to stick to, and it gives you great results if you're just printing in white, and um, at the same time you're not wasting too much ink. It's something that you can experiment with. Um, typical range is between 10% to even 120 if you're just doing like huge white um, letters or something. You should just stick to 60. Uh, now, when it comes to ICC profiles, a lot of people request ICC profiles. In Generally, ICC profiles are designed for specific inks to be used with specific printers, uh, to be printed on specific paper or film using specific settings. So an ICC profile is not really going to help you if you're going to start changing all these settings and you're going to be printing on a different film, using different inks, using a different printer. It, you need to keep all the settings and all the media and everything exactly the same to be able to use um, an ICC profile properly. So these are just the default options settings that you should be using. And you should be good um, no matter which ink or which film you decide to use. Okay, so we've got this covered. Let's go into white settings. Usually you would go for 100% white. Um, and this setting, 100% uh, white under any colored pixel, does exactly what it sounds like. It puts a layer of white under any colored pixel. If you're printing on uh, lighter garments, you might be able to save a little bit of ink by and just picking this option. Gradient white under any color pixel, and I can demonstrate it to you. Uh, see, it's trying to save white ink by not applying as much on darker areas. Because if you're uh, trying to print design for a black t-shirt, you don't need a layer of white under your darker colors anyway. Because um, yeah, it's just a waste. So usually people print on 100% white, and as you can see, the image uh, brightened up a little bit. But you can save a little bit of ink and to gradient. Um, the only problem is that you might not get as much uh, ink on your final on your final print, and the you might have problems with. Uh, powder not sticking to your design evenly so but you can play around with these settings I recommend you start 100% and this is the choke um, it decreases the white layer by three pixels a tiny amount it's done to make sure that you don't end up with the white outline all over your design uh, some people pick one pixel, I do three pixels, works fine, uh, you can experiment. Um, okay, so these, uh, we don't really need these. Let's take a look at the printing options. So this is how you would print typically if you're printing on um, on dark garments. 
you need to make sure that you print color in white and print color first. If you just want to print white, for example, so your end result will look like this, you would uncheck these two options and do one for white. If you are printing on a white t-shirt, you might want to do something like this, in which case you're not going to be printing any white at all, and you'll just do color. And if you want to do color and white at the same time, I'll go for something like this. And I think that's all the settings covered, and if you have any more questions, just let me know, I'll see if I can help you. Take care, guys.